beyond many other qualities, Chaim is a very quick learner. I mean, this introduction that he gave today is based largely on things that I told him over lunch. I mean, I've, I've been introduced by people at different gatherings. They have a prepared CV or something which tells them I, what law school I went to, when I practiced, and things like that. Chaim has put together what is, I have to say, the first time that I've been introduced on the basis of stories that I happened to tell him on the ride in from the airport and over lunch. I mean, I've been fed so graciously. I walked in here and there was food back there. I couldn't believe it. I mean, it would have been the third meal I had in two hours. <laughs> but um, I'm really delighted to be here. I'm particularly delighted to see my very, very long time friend, Judge Abram Cohn here, who was Cohn. such a glory, really, in terms of the federal bench here in Detroit and during the times that he spent as a senior judge in the federal courts in New York. And, you know, I, I think back about the occasions that I was in Detroit before at Avern's invitation and had an opportunity to meet people here in this city. And now, because I have the good fortune to have a next door neighbor in Jerusalem who happens to have, as you heard from Andrew, initiated this program. And he said to me, look, will you come and speak in Detroit? We got back from Israel last Thursday night, and here I am in Detroit a week later because Alan Cohn, who is a very good friend in Jerusalem, uncle of Andrew, whom you heard from, you know, told me about this program and how could I refuse to come here and share with you some stories, which is basically what I'm going to be doing this evening. I'm going to be talking about stories in terms of practice, things that I think would be of interest to lawyers, particularly in Detroit, because what I'm going to be talking about are focus, what I decided I would focus on would be experiences before the Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit, cases that came up to the Sixth Circuit involving menorahs, Chabad menorahs. And there was a series of these cases, and I tried to organize it in Bernie terms Sanders. of this evening in order to be able to report to you about them. Bernie the Sanders. Sixth Circuit is not one that necessarily is familiar to me, but I can say, it wasn't as part of the introduction, but I have appeared and argued before every federal circuit court in the United States. Every federal circuit court. The last one that I argued before, that I had not done a case before, was the Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit. And that case really resulted in a very interesting story that I can begin with. Um, the, um, the case did involve my representing Chabad in, in, in some particular way. And I had not argued in the Eighth Circuit before, but it was a case which I was appealing. And the, um, the judges who were scheduled to, uh, I, I was scheduled to appear before, were provided to me a couple of days before the argument. I had never appeared before any of them before, and I looked them up in the, the, um, the uh, lawyer's uh, volumes that you can look at, and I found that I didn't know any of them, but the senior judge was a judge who's, again, my senior, I have a senior moment, I've forgotten his name, I don't look at the notes, but he was a judge who um, I had not appeared before. I looked him up. It turned out he was appointed by President Carter. He was a resident of St. Louis, obviously a Democrat. I didn't know what his ethnic identity was, but it clearly, from his name, it was clear that he was not Jewish. 
But it turned out that the case was being argued in St. Paul, Minnesota, when on a day when all the judges of the Eighth Circuit were together in that city to hear arguments. And they were being divided into three judge panels. And I decided that I would go and listen to each of the judges as they were hearing arguments in the morning because my case was set for the afternoon. I went to the first courtroom which involved this judge from St. Louis. And I walked in. He was sitting up there on the bench, two other judges. An argument was going on. I looked. I was shocked. Not only because he was an African American, which I hadn't known, but he was wearing a yarmulke <laughs> sitting up there on the bench. I couldn't understand how that could happen. I sat there, listened to the argument, very active, walked down into the hall. In the hall, I even met a young man who had clerked in our former law firm. I asked him, how come the judge is wearing a yarmulke? He said, I don't know. His father, as a matter of fact, this young man's father was also a member of the Eighth Circuit. He said, my dad has noticed that and doesn't understand the reason for it. I then went to listen to the other two judges in their cases. They were not wearing yarmulkes. <laughs> I listened to their arguments and then went off to lunch with my clients, a group of Chabad rabbis in a law firm where they provided lunch for us. Now, one of the things about representing Lubavitch is that whether or not you get paid, you get very well fed. <laughs> and lunch was great. The rabbi said to me, do we have any Jewish judge on the panel? I said, no, you don't have any Jewish judge. But you do have a judge who wears a yarmulke. And he's not Jewish. He's an African American. I said, oh my God, he must be a Muslim. I said, no. The yarmulke he's wearing is a kippah shuga, like you buy in Jerusalem. How is that possible? We walk back into the courtroom for the afternoon session. Two o'clock, the court announces the court's in session. The three judges walk in, headed by the chief judge, wearing his yarmulke. He sits down. The other two judges are each side. I stopped my argument, very active. We won the case, by the way. We won the appeal. I, sometimes I tell the story and forget to tell people <laughs> what the result is. But I argue. My opponent argues. The chief judge questions during the entire session, very active. I do my reply. I step back at the end from the podium. <coughs> chief judge says, Thank you, counsel. We'll take this case under advisement. I've heard that hundreds of times in courts of appeal. But this, the judge adds, as I step back, and this appeared in the transcript of the oral argument, I think I ought to say something, because people will think I'm biased. He says, I wear this yarmulke, not for any religious reason, he says, but there's an air conditioner on the bottom that goes down on the top of my head. And I don't have as much hair as my colleagues do. I discovered, ultimately, that a Jewish colleague of his who heard about this complaint had bought a yarmulke on Ben Yehuda Street in Jerusalem and told him, here's the answer. And the judge wore that yarmulke during the entire rest of his time as a judge on the court of appeal. OK, I will tell you about the history of litigation for the Chabad Menorah before the Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit and in the district courts in, in the Sixth Circuit. Um, 